So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over equations to percentages. Now when scouring through the advanced information given about the GCSE exams of 2022 and the advanced information that was given, one topic that kind of stuck out was equations to percentages. Now the reason why it stuck out is because I'll be honest I've never heard of it before. I've seen, I've heard of percentages to decimals and fractions and vice versa and I've also seen a massive increase in equations to ratios and ratios to equations but I've never seen a joining up of these two particular topics so if you're a bit unnervy that your teacher has not gone through this topic do not worry because in all my experiences of being a maths teacher I've never taught this as a standalone topic. Now, when speaking to my colleagues and trying to look into what possible questions could come up relating to these two things, I would say it's going to be linked with percentages. And most likely, rather than you finding your typical questions that you would get with percentages, it'd be more of a case of where you've either got to criticize someone's calculation working with percentages or them giving you a set of working out or an equation, let's say, of the following typical things in percentages and then picking some information out from the equation. So again, just to summarize, what are key things in percentages are you most likely to get asked? So here it's a case of knowing how to work out a percentage, how to find the percentages of amounts, how to work out the increase or decrease amounts by a percentage, how to find the percentage change and how to find the amount after repeated percentage change. And these are the five main areas of percentages that your teachers most likely to cover. And again, they may have introduced an equation to help you find these things out, which is what we're going to go over now. Now, when you are asked to work out the percentage of an amount, and um, this is where we can use this formula. So here, your teacher may have gone through this formula. However, they may have showed you a different way. So the type of question where this formula would be used is where you're given two amounts and you need to work out the percentage of one amount from another. This is very in line with proportion. It's in similar to working out the fraction of amount. But because we're wanting percentage, all we need to do is just multiply that proportion or that fraction by 100. So as an example, let's have a look at question one. So it says squash is made using 60 milliliters of cordial, 250 milliliters of water. What percentage is cordial? So looking at this, we know that there's 60 milliliters of cordial. So that's going to be 60 over. And then I've got to work out the total. Now the total is not 250. It's actually going to be 60 plus 250, which equals 310 milliliters. So I'm going to do 60 divided by 310. And because I want the percentage, I multiply that by 100. And if I then just simply type that into my calculator, I get an answer of around about 19.4%. And that's to one decimal place. The next question then says squash is made using cordial and water. The following calculation finds a percentage of water. How much cordial is used in milliliters? So here what we need to do is look at this particular working out. So we're going to use this equation to work out the percentage of an amount from another amount. So looking at this, this here is the percentage of water. So the amount of water equals 150 milliliters. The total amount is 180. So if the squash is made from using cordial and water, it means that the difference must be the cordial. So therefore the cordial equals, and it's going to be 30 milliliters. And there is my final answer. Now, if the question wanted me to work out the percentage of cordial, then obviously all I could do is either do 30 divided by 180 times 100, or I could work out what percentage of the squash is water and then take that away from 100 and that will give me the percentage of cordial. So any of those two calculations would be fine. But that would be an example of where you're using an equation to work out a percentage or in this case, an amount using that equation. So let's now then move on to finding percentage of amount. So here, a formula that your teacher may have gone over is that to work out the percentage of an amount. So for example, if you can see question one, so it says find 16% of 450. So here we do the percentage amount, which is whatever it is, is a two digit number. Then we divide that by 100. So this here 
is basically the decimal multiplier. Now, if you are doing higher maths, then I would say that your teacher probably should have encouraged you to use decimal multipliers. But in order to find that decimal multiplier, you just do the percentage over 100 and you've got the decimal multiplier. So looking at question one, it says find 16% of 450. So if we use this formula, now this formula, I would say it's probably introduced more at primary school or in the early years of key stage three. But again, your teacher, depending on your level, should really be encouraging you to use decimal multipliers. But in this particular topic, this is where a formula or an equation comes into play. So this is going to be 16 over 100 multiplied by 450. And again, if I just simply type that into my calculator, I get an answer of 72. Then working with the next question, it says the following equation is used to find the number of aces a, a tennis player makes uh, dependent on the number of games they serve. And so here we've got an equation of a equals 0 0.46 equals g. Actually, it's a formula, not an equation, but we'll go with it. Then says, what percentage of aces per game do they make? So what we need to do here is look at this. So this here is our decimal multiplier. And what does 0.46 equal as a percentage? Well, it's going to be 46%. So moving on to increase or decrease amounts by a percentage. So here again, you may have been covered with regards to these two formulas. Now, sometimes this formula is combined into one, which is usually how I personally teach it. However, it can be taught as two separate equations. Now, the key thing to note is that what's in the bracket is basically the decimal multiplier after the increase and for decrease the bracket here is the decimal multiplier after the decrease so here is an example question so it says a pair of jeans originally priced as n pounds in a sale is calculated by uh, the original price times 0.85 what is the sale percentage now the key thing to note here is that this here is our decimal multiplier so what this 0.85 is going to equal is this part of the fraction so that is going to be equal to 100 minus the percentage which is what i'm after divided by 100 equals 0.85 so then solving this equation so i get 100 minus the percentage equals 85 and then so the percentage is going to equal 100 minus 85 which equals 15 percent now again if you could do that this question would only be worth one mark in an exam so it's just recognizing that with decreased percentages you are taking away the decimal multiplier away from one and with increase, you're again taking it away from one. So whatever the decimal multiplier is, take it away from one and you will then work out the percentage increase or decrease amount. So then moving on to question two, it says the price of a house after three years is calculated using 340,000 times 1.345 to the power of three. What is the yearly percentage increase of the house? Now for this, we can ignore the 340,000, that's the original price, and we can ignore the three because that's the year. The number I'm actually in question for is this here. So that then using that 1.345 has got to equal what I've highlighted in pink. So that's going to be 100% plus, well, let me just get rid of that percentage sign because that is what I'm looking for. So that plus the percentage divided by 100 equals 1.345. So taking that forward, I get 100 plus the percentage equals 134.5. And then take away that from 100 leaves me with 34.5% and there is my final answer. Then moving on to the finding the percentage change. So to find the percentage change, what we need to do is we need to use this formula where the percentage change is the difference divided by the original amount. And obviously because we want the percentage, we multiply that by 100. So here is an example. So it says Laura and Philippe want to calculate the percentage change of a jacket costing 75 pounds is now 27 pounds. And they calculate the percentage incorrectly. And what we need to do is explain their mistake. 
So looking at Laura's mistake, as you can see the difference now, one way to work these questions out is to actually work it out correctly. So here we've got 75 minus 27 divided by 75 and we need to multiply that by 100. So this is the correct calculation. So then if we compare this to what these two people have done, let's have a look at where the mistake is. Well, here 75 take away 27 is going to equal 48. So what the calculation should be is 48 divided by 75 times 100. So looking at Laura's answer, you can see here that she has added the two amounts rather than subtracting so basically her numerator is incorrect everything else is fine and then with Philippe's answer again you can see comparing the two differences here the original amount is not used so he has not divided by the original amount uh, which was 75 pounds not 27 pounds so again that would be an example of where you could have an equation to a percentage question written in an explain and uh, question moving on to find the amount after repeated percentage change so this is also known as compound interest uh, but also interest you automatically think is going to be increased but it's not always the case so the original formula that you may have been told is to work out the accumulated amount. It's the original amount multiplied by the decimal multiplier after the increase or decrease to the power of how much time. So looking at using these formulas. So here it says now typically I would say this is going to be a reverse question but we're going to substitute the numbers into that formula to then work out what the answer is. So here it says the value of a house in 2018 was valued at 20, 215,000 and in 2021 it was valued at £312,991. What is the yearly rate of increase to one decimal place? So looking at question one what we've got is that the new amount is 312991 equals and if I substitute the original amount which is 215000 multiplied by let's say dm the decimal multiplier which is what I want to work out and the year difference is 3 so I want to make dm the subject so from this what I need to do is do 312991 divided by 215000 and that equals dm cubed. Then from this, if I then cube root 312991 over 215000, that will tell me what the decimal multiplier is. Now if I just quickly put that into my calculator now, let's do that when this eventually loads. So here I'm going to do shift cube root or let's get the function right so shift cube root which is there and then I enter my fraction button so three one two nine nine one and then scroll down to two one five zero 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 equals so it, looking at that it's one point one three three so then that equals one point one three three so therefore then that's going to give me a yearly rate of 13.3% per year. And that's for question one. So then moving on to question two. So let me just get rid of all of this. So question two says the value of a car in 2007 is 9,995. And in 2013, the car was valued at 6,500. What is the yearly rate of depreciation? So again, very similar to this. So let's set up the equation. So here we've got 6500 equals 9995 times the decimal multiplier to the number of years, which in this case is six years. So then rearranging this to make DM the subject, I get 6500 divided by 9995 
equals dm to the power of six now for this what i then need to do is do the sixth root of six five zero zero over nine 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 five equals dm so on my scientific calculator you should have an icon that looks like this now it might be a shift function it might be a separate button on your calculator so let's just have a look on this one so here it is a shift button and you usually find it as a shift function above your power button so if i press shift in that i can then choose my root which in this case is six scroll inside i'm going to enter a fraction so i've got six five zero zero over nine 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 five equals and it gives me 0 0.930 that equals 0 0.9307 blah 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 so from this i then because it's the going down i need to take that away from one which if i've left it on my calculator which i have so i just do one minus the answer press equals and it comes up as 6.9 percent so equals 6.9 percent and let me just double check make sure that doesn't round and no it doesn't so that's fine and there you go per year so the value of the car has gone down by 6.9 percent per year